Right, so I want to do a, kind of a work, workflow video for using this Face It uh, Blender add-on. Um, I bought it in the sales full price at $78. Probably, I'd say it is worth getting if you're doing a lot of um, modeling and you want to create essentially AR kit blend shapes for facial mapping. Um, the reason I'm using it is in CC3 um, when you load in a full like unoptimized CC3 plus um, character you get all of these additional blend shapes but as soon as you turn something to game base like the character to game base you lose them um, so essentially you get everything up to all of these additional ones that are stripped out <coughs> as part of the conversion now you, coming into unity you can get, you actually get the two looking pretty good and pretty uh, similar but um your dad um, has he done this before If you don't talk to me, I can't help you. Um, so the, the problem I, I find is mostly around the eyes. Obviously, you still get kind of blend shapes moving the um, eyebrows up and down, but that, that kind of expression in around the eyes is what's missing. So to get that back, to be able to essentially run this animation clip with the AR clip clip blend shapes. Um, all of this stuff on one of these, you need to be able to essentially create the, um, the AR kit blend shapes. So the process I'm using I don't know if there's another one, a better one, an easier one, but so far this is what I've got. So you export an FBX from Character Creator using the Blender preset. And, um, you need to do a little bit of preparation. Um, so all of these steps are kind of outlined in the uh, Face It documentation. Um, which is pretty good, I have to say. You know, you're going to just follow through and uh, um, it explains things. But there were a couple of issues, a couple of bits why I got stuck, which is why I'm doing the video so I can try to remember it for next time. Um, you import the, pre the plugin if you don't know in preferences, install, navigate to the zip to unzip the download and make sure it's enabled so a couple of things that we need to do uh, we're dealing with a mesh which is combined so eyelashes teeth tongue eyes are all part of this one mesh we need to separate those out but I also need to be careful in that I want to keep the blend shape sorry not the vertex groups with the blend shapes, the existing blend shapes uh, from um, <coughs> character creator. So I don't want to overwrite these. So the workaround is you select the body, a shift D and enter to duplicate. Then Alt P clear and keep transformation to clear parents I've got now kind of got that out of that armature hierarchy but I also want to delete the armature modifier so I'm just now dealing with a, a like a, you know a mesh a bot, um, and I can actually just to make things a bit if I put that in here, put that in there, and 
So we're ignoring our original uh, rigged mesh for now. And tab to go into edit mode. Mesh, separate, loose parts. So when that's done, is it separated out all of the parts of this mesh? And the parts are things like, so I go out of edit mode, back into object mode. Um, that's the front part of the eyelash and the back part of the eyelash. So you can essentially select all these things. Top uh, front and back of all the eyelashes and control J to uh, combine. So, eyelashes. Um, they recommend that so anything that's kind of symmetrical, like eyelashes, you combine as one, then you can use the mirror modifier as you're making changes. But the exception of the eyes, so you do need. Two eyes as a kind of a prerequisite. Uh, I left I right. Just delete things to, as I work to make things easier. So that's the body and the two arms. And I know also there are like two uh, tear ducts. J to combine that's the body and now we've got teeth top just shift selecting each of the teeth yep. control J um, Teeth up, uh, that's the term. And then everything else is Control J. Uh, okay. So everything's been separated out. Now, on the face it, um, on a panel, you want to register the face object, which is essentially the main body. So, register that. Make sure you're in setup, obviously. Body main. And then selecting each additional part in turn, just register the selected object. So, register. Register. Um, rename that before I start. Uh, oh, because I've got two uppers. That's lower. So I'm going to throw it, probably. Let's find out. I'm going to get rid of that redo because. Uh, So I did the eyelashes, select teeth, proper teeth lower, register, yeah, good. Uh, upper and register the tongue, okay. And now selecting each one, so eye left, left eyeball, you click on these, eye right, right eyeball, eyelashes, eyelashes, teeth lower, Upper turn. Okay, so I've got nothing rigid. That would be like an accessory. That is all done. So we've kind of registered each of the geometry. Um, what we're doing by clicking on these is that you're essentially adding um, vertex groups that face it uses on each of the different ones. 
that's done. Go into the rig part. Um, we don't need asymmetrical because we are using just the um, uh, just a normal face. Um, so first things first, one on the keypad. We'll go into a front view which you need for the initial part and just generate landmarks. So having done that, this kind of overlay appears. And if I move my mouse, it goes up and down. What you need to do is you need to line it up as best you can to the bottom of the chin and click. And having clicked now that I'm when I move my mouse, it's changing the top part of this overlay. So I'm kind of lining up the eyes. Click again, and now when I move the mouse, it's changing the width of the overlay. I'm just going to follow the um, can see the contour over the face best you can. Now we're actually going to move these landmarks by hand. They're essentially things that you can select, grab, G, you know, and scale, um, just like you would uh, um, <coughs> any other object in Blender. Something I'd recommend is just not mention until the next part when you're kind of projecting in, in kind of, um, the side view, but I personally found it easier to turn on face snapping at this stage because then any movement you make will automatically move these onto the face. Um, they're currently, they're kind of set back. So, um, grab, I'm just going to go through each one and essentially. There are, uh, in the documentation, there are pictures to show you exactly where they should be. Um, I'm just going to do it fairly quickly. They recommend the mouse should extend slightly to the side. Snapping is kind of going too far into the center, I'm finding sometimes, so be careful with that. Um, yeah, that's good. Just the tip of the nose, that's the side. just a little just to force them onto the front of that and you can select more than one at the same time um, I'll do these these are the um, eyebrows and you kind of want them while you're seeing the um, the texture but the problem is until you've done your proper mapping onto the front. It's really hard to tell where they should go. So just be careful about that. They disappear in uh into front view. I'm just going to do these. Oh. Again they recommend the eye, this, the sides of the eye. 
to extend a little bit. Being pretty rough on like rough and ready with this, I, I would recommend taking more time. And you can also um, see the eyelashes a bit in the way there. You can, you know, delete. Kind of, that's going to be your eyelid. So where does the eyelid kind of go from? Okay, I think that'll do. Now if you find like clipping and stuff like that, just go into view, clip start. And the blender has a habit of defaulting to quite low, uh, like too high a value, I would usually end, add a zero so you can get in closer. Right, um, so we've done essentially setting so grab Y your um, lips a little bit and doing the same with the eyes can't remember whether it's the eyes and the Do check, you know, do take time. I was just sticking out too much. Are those? That's better. Um, so they recommend insetting the eyes as well. Grab Y. In a little bit. Okay, oh, we'll find out what we get. I've done this pretty quickly. So, show our eyelashes again on the face it tab. Oh, yeah, so I've kind of done two things. What I did is I did the front view, like one, and I also have been working through and making sure that I'm doing the side view at the same time but if you're doing it by the book you essentially follow through each of these buttons so you've done the face view then you pr press project uh, which means concentrate on the side view now and probably worth doing just to double check you haven't got anything really wrong like this is really wrong so I'm glad I checked Let's do some weird things. So. 
that one. I think that I think that's good now. Okay, one last check. Yeah. So, ready to generate the rig and animation. So you press this button, uh, which shows you the kind of the controls for all the your rig. And I'm not sure there's stuff in the documentation about checking things here, and then if it's not quite right, going back to landmarks. That bit I haven't quite understood. I think it's to do with like actually looking at the bones and checking their positioning, but in general terms, this should do us. So I'm just going to click bind. This is the bit it gets me every time. It's kind of binding complete. So if it's bind, I'm expecting to have like pose mode. Ah. <laughs> Okay, well, if it got me, it probably will get you too. So, you have to select the rig. And then you can go into pose mode. And check. So, let's turn on. Textures on. Um, so, literally, you can grab these controls and you know move them so I think that's it you're kind of checking that everything's you know correctly moving what you expected to I personally find it hard to know at this stage but if you come out of pose mode, then you still have the option to go back to landmarks. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, but with face rig selected, go into pose mode so you can actually use the controls. And then in animation, um, you've got... Your different blend shapes. Now, my this is all. This is not so. so this one. I guess I can do. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's not positioned correctly. It's moving. It's meant to be the eyelid, but what it's doing is it's moving too much of the top and. This one, wherever this one is, it's not, <laughs> not moving anything that I need it to. So that's all wrong. So go back, exit post mode, object. Back to landmarks. Do I want to keep the binding weights? No. Just go back. We need to do a bit more work. How do I edit them? Possibly. Uh, eyelashes. Is this one? It's a shame that. Generate a 
again. Uh, bind. Let's try the smooth correct. Modify, let's just add a, a modifier. Make sure you're So maybe I'm going in the wrong direction. Maybe I'm okay. Out of pose mode. Break. Maybe it actually needs to be higher rather than lower. Let's go way up. Generate, bind, um, back in here, select face rig, pose mode, that's better, so yeah, so that Actually, that top line was it's still kind of deforming the eyelid a bit. So, let's do it one more time. Now that I understand a bit better, so that's kind of maybe could even go even higher. So, back, back. I don't want to. Actually, that's the bottom of the eyebrow. That's the top of the eyebrow. That makes a little bit more sense. Okay, check the projection. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, right, let's do this. Bind. Uh, animate. Select the rig. Nah, not massively out, but that'll do. So, at this stage, if you're making any changes, make sure you've got auto rigging on and show all the options. You might as well. So they that enables you to do essentially. See, the auto keying does what you expect it to. down so I'm sure that that's okay but yeah that looks fine okay so having done all of 
this and it's all to so that's great but I actually want to copy it over to the other side so the eye blink right so you just click on the mirror expression so my changes on that side are mirrored on this side I don't have to do things twice and then it's literally a process of just going through each one making sure the expressions are what you want um, something that caught me initially was moving the eyes um, I left my right there are, you have to find these circles they're the controls for the eyes so I found that it was making my looking down just way too far down uh, and mirror to the other side looking right so again. which is which oh that's the wrong one Um, looking out right, uh, kind of. I just found that they were, the eyes were a little bit too, too much. They look a bit weird, but still. Uh, squid. Probably want that a bit more. Okay. Um, And if you make a mistake, just reset it to what you think will work. Okay. Um, your left, your right. Oh, you can also like go through each by scrubbing on the timeline. Uh, this one, the mouth closed. Do not edit for some reason. It just needs <laughs> needs that. I'm sure, somebody who knows AR kit knows better than I do. Um, could do more of a pucker if you really wanted. These are pretty extreme, but I found you kind of need to be a little bit more extreme than you think. Um, and you can scale bones as well, and, and I suppose I know rotate them. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you 
know, there's 52 of them, so... Um, accentuating things just a little bit more. That'll do. Uh, tongue out, you definitely need to fix. It's this. And that grab two just making sure it's central. We've done all these changes. As I say, you can double check by playing through the timeline, they essentially kind of step through each of the blend shapes and we've auto keyed, so we should be fine. If you're like completely like, oh, I've made a mess, reset all the expressions, but we're gonna go with that. Um, now, something that caught me last time, you're going to bake and you wanna bake and finalize, but you can't. The reason is you've stayed in post mode go to object mode and then that becomes ungrayed out um, so bake so we baked into our character uh, uh, the reason the keep the tongue still sticking out is we're still on the tag out on the animate window. So every time that you press one of these, you're moving up and down the timeline. If you select this, you'll see the keyframes. So all you need to do is just to go back to frame zero on the timeline, or frame one, I should say, and that will reset the uh, shape key to, to to the base neutral key. Right, <clears throat> so we've got, as you can see, we've got the um, shape keys, the, the AR kit shape keys, mouse, mouth packer, mouth funnel, um, and they're separated out on each of the individual uh, meshes. If you remember, we still have our original up here. So, what you need to do now is to essentially copy these shape keys onto the original. We've not altered the mesh, um, so the polygon count is the same. Um, selecting all of this. Uh, Control-J. So it becomes just one mesh again. So open this out, and I'm just going to rename it the same. Actually, no, I don't need to rename it the same. Now, so that's that's the body. Now, you want to say so you want to transfer the vertex order from oh, which way around? <laughs> Let me double check. This is pretty important. So I'm just reading from the. Um, from the manual, we bring this in. So, transfer vertex order. 
in case the vertex order changed due to the changes applied in step two, which was the splitting of meshes and then the recombining, you have to restore the original vertex order before moving on. So the vertex order in the game body needs to be applied to this. First select the duplicate and then select the game body and then transfer vertex order. Pasted 34,300 vert IDs. Uh, if you don't have the same vertex order then it, all the blend shapes will just be moving the wrong vertices and you get this kind of weird mashup um, on the mesh. So. What have we done? We've recombined all our split meshes into one, then we selected it, select the original, clicked on transfer vertex order. There's a couple of um, add-ons that are mentioned in the um, documentation. Um, transfer vertex order, this plugin, uh, which is free. Um, and also mesh data transfer and I really I think this one you have to do in order to, for that functionality that we've just used to be available so you have to install this one um, this is optional but I really recommend doing it it's essentially the second button that the transfer shape keys now I tried that and it didn't work it kind of just gave me the wrong shape keys and that's mentioned in the documentation it says if you've got a problem um, here we go in case you have problems to transfer the shape keys to the original geometry then use mesh data transfer and I did have problems that the copy from pressing this just didn't work um, even and obviously you need to if you're trying it this way just make sure you don't you untick overwrite is existing otherwise all of the existing ones these will be overwritten by these um, but I yeah it didn't work for me so um, I ended up using the uh, the mesh data transfer plugin which again you install it in the normal way then what you do is you select your game body so the the original and then you want to go to properties whatever properties is is it further down here yep uh, and it's here mesh data transfer so the sample space but it, it does some really amazing things this plugin but essentially it can kind of copy um, Things like copy UVs, vertex groups between shapes that are of different um, geometry. We're doing something pretty simple. We want to stay so in the local space because we haven't moved the characters that are exactly in the same space. In the local space, um, I've selected the game body and what, what's my source? Well, the source is this body that we've added the new blend shapes onto and we want to transfer shape key so you just click on this button and fingers crossed it's done its magic and the way that you find out is you just scroll down and if you can see the additional keys which I can it's a cheap puff that wasn't there before so let me hide now this that's our got some weird stuff going on on the oh it's the hair mesh I think no, but yeah hair from character creators is always a bit crazy in terms of its materials um, so body so we were going to check now cheek puff for example cool so 
we've essentially done what we set out to do. It's, it's quite, it's been quite long-winded, but hopefully it's of use. So you, what we've done is we've added on top of the existing blend shapes the ones that you know come with the game um, base. So you know, open, explosive. Massively expressive. Um, but yeah, these are the original from the export from Character Creator. But we've now added on top of that the kind of the fifty-two um, <laughs> It's the cap. It's the bit. The yeah, which I actually think is worth getting rid of, to be honest. I might do that now while I'm here, like a bonus, going to edit, control A, faces, select all of that. Yeah, and then X. So that's deleted the, the cap of the head because I just never find it looks any good in Unity anyway. Um, but no, that's all good. So we've got our character, two, three. So you've got these guys. That scale, the rotation's a bit weird. Scale is all wrong, all rotated, all rotated because it's Blender and you're going into Unity. So select these, object. Uh, so we will apply all transforms, okay? And now we can do the export uh, to FBX in here. Uh, where was I? Test. He's game base. I should mention that because that's the whole point. Uh, so my preset armature mesh, um, just the selected objects, um, geometry, the armature. They're my settings essentially. Okay, export. So back in Unity, we got this guy. The rig is humanoid. Apply. On the model tab, I recommend changing blend shape normals to import. Um, mesh compression off, optimize mesh. There's a debate. Um, you possibly want that to nothing, um, but I tend to leave it to the default. It, it, essentially, this is Unity kind of going to mess with stuff. Um, but that's that's the basics. Essentially, blend shape normal import. Rig humanoid apply. And I bring this character in. Let's move him across a bit. Move our camera across a bit. So obviously all our um, materials are wrong but you can see we've got the additional blend shapes that we wanted but there's an issue with them let's first fix the clothes so it's kind of uh, inspect uh, grab 
one of the other guys so just so the UVs are correct this is the game base so it's what I've called low poly okay so here's the turn I nails on body head eyelashes upper teeth I just do upper teeth upper teeth lower teeth so you can see this is why I don't worry too much about when I come out a blender with the materials or, <clears throat> or the auto importer because I've done it already using an, an F, a Unity FBX and export from character creator into the auto importer which is created materials and I've also sometimes I'll create my own uh, meshes any uh, materials from my own shaders anyway uh, the other thing is the hair so a short blowback is Okay, now if we have a look at this, which is the high poly one with our blend shapes, you'll notice all the blend shapes are named by character creator annoyingly A01 blah 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 uh, A02, and this is different. Now, close tab. This is different to these, which are actually the AR kit kind of by the book name. So there's no underscores and there's no prefix. So, how do you rename all of those? Um, so, again, another. Um, let's see if I can find it. Another plugin you can buy it on the Acid Store Skin Pro, um, but if you buy it on um, Itch, it'll be a lot cheaper. And it's kind of like a toolkit for skin meshes. It's really useful, but it's a bit cryptic to use. I'm still finding my way around it, um, but it's 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 useful once you know kind of the bits that it's got. It's got a couple of components that are handy. Um, for example, one of which is um, where is it? I can't remember what it's called now. Uh, I think it's the blend shape controller. There you are. It's just it's kind of. Uh, so the blend shape control it just allows you to on a, a character if they had a lot if you had lots of different body parts but they all share the same um, blend shapes you could control them from one place um, clamp the shapes add kind of hidden prefixes and do all sorts of clever stuff like that or if you're on just one skin mesh click on this little hamburger icon into skin editor you can do things like let me go to the console clear um, so your shapes which is the, which are the blend shapes like log which initially you think oh what's it done but if you click on this and you see it's logging all of the blend shapes that can be useful if you need to do like you know comparisons between one set of blend shapes and another for example but the other thing it allows you to do which is what we're wanting to do so it, again because of this because of the fact that these are called um, a19 um, synchronize that and these ones are called just mouth shrug upper uh, and they're also in a different order um, mouth stretch it, it's just all it, 
they're all kind of the same blend shapes but they're in a different order with different names so we need to if you want to use the animation clips that came from um, character creator if you want to use these you need to follow that naming convention so the way that you do the renaming is using skin and then uh, shapes edit names which opens a kind of a slightly cryptic panel that lists all of your blend shapes um, but the clue is that there are functions that you can use the one I use is replace text so I've created one already I can make this available um, and it's this replace text and it's that's the mapping so it goes from my blink left to a14 i underscore i blink left i look down left to a08 so i've just gone through every single one that was different and you copy and paste that in here and actually once you've done that once you can just create the asset um I have. In fact, I might make the asset available rather than the text file and make it easier. And you just select that. So if you notice, these are all named like the traditional AR kit names. And I, now I click apply text filter. Just a little bit of thinking. Get blend shapes. And they've all changed. Go back in here just to double check. And yes, now we're looking at the same game object but it's renamed all of those so in theory now on this game base we can use the high poly animator um, and drive these blend shapes except some are missing okay that's understandable. You've got rid of the uh, CC base tier line, uh, which is that game object, which in fact I usually disable anyway. So we haven't got those, that's fine. The same with the base eye occlusion, not there on the game base. But then as we move up, we're hitting the body, which you'd think, oh, why are they missing? And we have changed the name so they should match. Well, it's because your high poly export is CC base body, your game uh, base export is CC game body. So if you want to use the same um, clips that were intended for um, the high poly version, you have to rename uh, the tongue's not included. So face it, doesn't do the tongue bit but actually it's not used by default in iClone when you're creating your uh, Aculip uh, animations. You can turn it on um, and you can select those. And as far as I know, oh, is it one by one you have to do it? Oh, it's because I'm still in, um, if, actually let's do it. I might as well be like do it properly. Um, so make sure I'm hitting the right this animation clip so control D so that it's no inside an FBX is just uh, editable now change that over um, do a copy of the controller. It's essentially going to be driven by the same data. I'm just going to Okay, and I double check that this one is yeah, that's that one. That's fine. So that should enable me now to delete essentially the data that's not being used. And 
why well file size there's no point having all of this data like in the clip if it's not actually yeah so things have gone according to plan we should be able to might as well save and press play your dad has he done this before if you don't talk to me I can't help you your dad has he done this before if you don't talk to me I can't help you. So the first thing was, I guess for me, that the eyes are just moving all over the place and also around the eyes isn't as expressive as, um, as the original, kind of the high poly. Um, so I guess in, in face it, you really have to work hard at getting those blend shapes just right. And so I've done it actually done another pass at this now and the technique I use which is probably what I should have done first is to essentially drill down on absolutely every single one of those shapes like one by one open up the slider to max go into so is that brow inner up go into face it brow in up and make sure that you're using all those handles to really shape uh, as much as you can the exact shape of each of these so brow down brow down left um, don't get kind of disheartened by the you know sometimes the eyebrows will kind of clip into look like they look like they're clipping but actually if you remember they transparent so not, it, they don't actually look that way but I essentially I just that's what I did I went through and as part of doing that I found some slightly odd things um, which are worth knowing specifically to do with character creator um, for example um, the eye look so the eye look up all the, the eye looks you notice it's actually just moving the skin but the eye isn't moving at all it's kind of dead straight which is not what I would have expected and I'm pretty sure that's not true to the AR kit um, kind of blend ship shapes I think it's because they must be depending on their bone animation to be moving the eyes and so they've kind of centered them in the blend shapes which is why that first version of the um, export was just had wild eyes they were kind of flying all over the place so watch out for that if you're working with a character creator model and you're trying to recreate eye clone um, animation clips uh, on one of these character creator game based models and you're trying to recreate these because they're not what you expect all, all of those eye look down is the same the eyes don't move it's just the skin around it. Um, what else did I find that was weird? The jaw. Jaw does absolutely or next to nothing. You draw forward, you'd expect it to move forward. It's actually, the only movement seems to be at the back of the jaw, on all of the jaw movements. I'm guessing that's a bug because that's not right. Uh, but otherwise, you know, like the funneling, do your best. It, it's not, you know, hugely easy. Where's my mouth? Funnel. Like I did my best, but it wasn't like pucker. I managed to improve. And I just got, you know, it, it's quite laborious, but literally just blend shape by blend shape just copying that and 
So I think the results are worth it. This is actually now an updated um, version of the mesh and it's yeah it's kind of your dad has he done this before if you don't talk to me i can't help you your dad this um so you can see kind of around the eyes is more expressive now and, and that's what I was looking for which you don't get in the original game base uh, clip um, having centred the eyes they're kind of not moving as much anymore the lips are slightly better not hugely better but slightly better but it's mostly the expressions around the eyes still not quite as good as the original but we're getting there anyway that's um and that's the process um, and I hope it's been useful I hope it's kind of essentially um, kind of made uh, let me drag it in uh, face it a little bit easier to use if like me you were kind of overwhelmed by the process but actually the workflow is quite methodical and um, I can see it being really useful especially if you're a modeler and you're creating characters from scratch obviously but uh, for this character creator to unity workflow as well